Hello everybody, welcome in. I'm Dr. Jim Cellini. I'm a board certified practicing veterinary neurologist. On today's video, I'm going to react to an episode of Bondi Vet. Bondi Vet's a very popular Australian uh, veterinary kind of behind the scenes reality show. And this video is entitled, Horrific Seizures Suffered by Vet's Own Dog. And I'm gonna go through this video and talk to you guys about what seizures are, what they look like, and what you can do at home if, God forbid, your dog has a seizure. But before I do that, guys, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, always helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, let's get right into the video. In Melbourne, Vet Danny and partner Will have had an extremely distressing morning with their beloved dog, Bear. It's okay, Bear, it's okay. Will, my partner, woke up uh, to a banging sound. And I've just seen Bear just in the middle of a, a grand mal seizure. So she's just paddling and uh, you know, in a real tonic sort of state. It's just the most horrific thing to see happen to your own animal. I think All right, so I'm going to pause the video right there. And this brings me to the first thing I want to discuss in reacting to this, which is just simply the appearance of seizures. What Bear is doing in this video is like a textbook example of a grand mal seizure in a dog. You see, he's not conscious. He's thrashing around, demonstrating what we call tonic-clonic movements or convulsive activity, and he's hypersalivating. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was like urinating during the episode too, and they just didn't show it, you know, because it's TV. But this is like classic grand mal seizure activity. So if you ever see your pet do this, this is probably what they're doing if the episode looks like this. And that's important to know because if you know your dog's having a seizure, then you know that your dog has a problem in their brain. Now I'll get to what those problems can be later on, but it's a localizing symptom, meaning there's only one part of the body that can generate a seizure, and that's the brain, the, specifically the front half of the brain. So there's some good information just right off the bat and a lot of things that you can narrow down and know just by the appearance of the episode. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. Let's keep watching the video. About it being a patient in a hospital setting, everything's so controlled, you know what's going on. Um, you know, you've got all your medications there, everything to, to act, but when it's your own animal, it's just so much more emotional and distressing. A huge shock because this is the first time this has ever happened. All right, let's pause the video a second time now and let's talk about what to do at home if you find your dog having a seizure. To start with, let me dispel a myth, which is, a dog cannot swallow their own tongue during a seizure. I don't know where that came from. You don't have to worry about that. That's like physically impossible. And speaking to that, you actually never want to put your hands into the mouth of a dog having a seizure. The reason being, they're not conscious, so they have no idea what's happening. They don't know who you are, and they're very capable of biting with all the strength they can muster down in your hand. And I've seen people more than once have pretty severe hand injuries trying to do that. Rule number one, if you find your dog having a seizure, stay away from their mouth. What you can do though at home is essentially what you see Dr. Danny doing here. You see her standing by Bear's side, talking to him, make sure he's okay. Sometimes if your pet's kind of thrashing their head against the ground, you know, maybe put a pillow or a blanket under them, make sure they don't keep banging their head. But honestly, the best thing you can probably do for your pet having a seizure is just to make sure that they're safe in their environment like they're not about to fall down stairs or off a ledge or into a body of water, things of that nature. Now, if you know your pet's an epileptic and they've had seizures before, what you can do is administer a drug called midazolam intranasal. So you preload it into a syringe and you put it against their nose and squirt it into their nose. And that drug midazolam is absorbed into their bloodstream through their nasal turbinates. So you can only get this from a veterinarian prescription. But I send this home with a lot of my clients to give known epileptic dogs, dogs who have seizures, to try to stop it at home. Oh, 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 you're okay. You're okay. She's come out of a seizure. Uh, she's not neurologically normal yet. She's pacing around. She's panting. She's wanting to drink a lot. She seems really ravenous. She's hanging around the fridge. Oh, that door open. <laughs> Just want to see how quickly she sort of gets through this phase and recovers. So what Dr. Danny's describing here is what we call a post-ictal phase. And this is the phase right after a seizure, after the convulsions are over, 
where a dog's brain is kind of like rebooting the computer. So you'll see them still not kind of being their normal selves. They'll pace around, they'll act very demented, they can bump into things, they act like they're blind. And sometimes they can show aggression towards you and other family members. So definitely that's something to be aware of and be careful about. But this phase can last anywhere between a few minutes to a few hours. And every dog's different as far as how they react and, and kind of spend time in this phase. Uh, but that's very common after a seizure. Danny is still anxious to get to the bottom of Bear's sudden early morning seizure. Of course, my emotional brain is just leaping to the worst case scenario. The first thing I'm worried about is that she has a brain tumor. So, yeah, we really just need to get more information to know why this is happening. She'll be right. <sighs> We've had a big... But big we will get to the bottom of it. We will get you sorted. She's my baby. She's, um, everything. Let's talk about causes of seizures, okay? So first, some terminology. Uh, we got to use the word epilepsy here. And when you use the word epilepsy, by itself, the term epilepsy just means recurrent seizure. But it doesn't talk about the cause. So there's three major categories of epilepsy. Idiopathic epilepsy, structural epilepsy, and reactive epilepsy. Idiopathic epilepsy means seizures that recur and we don't know why. We're idiots. Idiopathic means we're idiots and we don't know why. Yeah, I feel like that every day. When dogs start having seizures between the age of about one and five, it's most likely that. I would say if Bear is between the age of one and five and he's normal otherwise outside of a seizure, and the fact that he's an Australian Shepherd, and we see this so often in Australian Shepherds and other herding breeds, he probably has idiopathic epilepsy. Structural epilepsy means that there is a structural brain lesion, things like tumors, strokes, meningitis, anatomical malformation, degenerative problems, things of that nature, structurally bothering the brain. I make an analogy that when your lungs are irritated, you cough, when your brain's irritated by something, you have a seizure. Reactive epilepsy is pretty uncommon and that's due to things like poisonings and toxins, organ failure, electrolyte abnormalities, things of that nature. And we see that a very small percentage of the time. Most of the discussion revolving around epilepsy involves either idiopathic or structural epilepsy. Now the bear has somewhat recovered from this seizure, I want to do a neurological examination. Essentially, she doesn't know this is coming and she's seeing it drop in front of her yep. face, but it's not got a smell, it's not got a sound or anything, so it means that she is seeing. Mm. So that's good. Hey, you're a good girl. Just checking that. By checking Bear's reflexes in response to light, girl. Danny can work out if there are any early signs of brain abnormality. Good job, puppy doggy. Hey. I'm really happy with the results on that examination. I couldn't see any abnormalities there, so that is a good sign at this stage. All right, so let's talk about the exams. I'll keep this brief because the intricacies of a neurologic exam are like way beyond the scope of this video. When you do a neuro exam, you're basically taking a dog through more or less like a field sobriety test. And you're trying to see if one side of the nervous system isn't working as well compared to the other side. And if you see that combined with having seizures, that points to a structural problem in the brain. Whereas dogs with idiopathic epilepsy have normal brains and thus should be normal on an exam when they're not having a seizure. And they're completely normal otherwise and not having a seizure. So again, this normal exam on Bear would fit with the suspicion that Bear probably has idiopathic epilepsy. The next step for Bear is to get some bloods, just to rule out anything that's going on outside of her nervous system um, that could be causing these neurological signs. Yeah. Vet nurse Louise is helping Danny take Bear's blood sample. All right, so in case you didn't know, when we collect blood from dogs for a blood sample, we commonly will actually take it from the jugular vein because it's a very easy vein to get to and get access to. Um, I know that's kind of wild if you're in human medicine. I don't think you get jugular sticks very often. I could be wrong. Uh, you see Bear is, let's just say, tolerating it. <laughs> The findings will hopefully give Danny more clues about what's caused Bear's distressing seizure. One of the hardest things about being a vet and a pet owner is when something does go wrong, you know uh, what the range of things could be. From the simplest thing all the way to the most sinister. So it can be incredibly stressful and I do get very clouded in my thoughts. Yeah, so that's definitely true. When you know all the possibilities that this could be right off the bat, 
due to just being a vet, it's really hard to focus on what is most likely because you're too clouded by all the possibility. I'm sure doctors practicing human medicine probably feel the same way when like them or a family member gets sick. The exception being radiologists because I'm not even sure they stand up to practice medicine. A bit nervous waiting to get those blood results. I'm really crossing my fingers that nothing comes up on them today. Thank you. I'm so sorry. All those bloods there, are they? Yes, we okay, do have them there. See. Also, can I just say how dramatic this music is? Uh, anybody who works in vet med knows that we're getting blood work. It's like a CBC cam, pretty standard, not like a huge deal. I know they're trying to raise the stakes in this video, but it's very dramatic music for a CBC cam. I just had to say that. For you. Okay, good. So there's nothing going on outside of the brain it looks like that no. could be causing that so that's yeah. really good good thank you yay yay Wendy doggy. good job Papa. all right we're not out of the woods there could be something else going on but for now it is good news all right so dr danny ran some blood work on bear just checking general organ function this is a very common first step with like almost any symptom you can think of um, and with a normal blood work, you basically ruled out reactive epilepsy. So now what we're left with is basically idiopathic or structural epilepsy. It's been a big day, a lot of emotion. So now we're going to go home and try and have a relaxing night. And Bear is on the bed tonight with lots of cuddles. <laughs> also, I'd just like to point out, Dr. Danny seems great. Um, and I bet that her coworkers and her clients are really happy to be working with her. She seems like a really nice person who cares a lot. Back home with partner Will, Danny is doing her best to stay positive and plans to start there on medication to hopefully ward off any further seizures. Well, I'm going to pause it right here. Very briefly, I just want to talk about seizure medication. This could be its own separate video and maybe will be one day. But in general, there's two drugs I like to start with epileptic dogs. That's either phenobarbital or Keppra. I err towards phenobarbital because it's twice a day, whereas Keppra needs to be three times a day. And there's more evidence that phenobarbital works and it's effective compared to Keppra. And in my experience, it's a much more effective drug in general. There's a small risk of things like liver toxicity and bone marrow toxicity from phenobarbital, but I see that low single digits percent of the, of the time. I would not recommend using things like CBD oil as a sole anticonvulsant drug, just because there's not enough data to prove that it's even remotely close to controlling epilepsy on its own. Well, a lot of people ask me that, so I thought I'd throw that in the video too. Um, well, the next day in Melbourne, it's another traumatic morning for Danny and partner Will. It's okay, Bear. It's okay. Good girl. It's all right. So this morning, Will and I were woken to Bear having another seizure. It's all right. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay, Bear. Shh, shh, shh. This is a really strong one. It was a fairly long seizure as far as her time frame um, usually goes, so it was a more severe one this morning, which is a bit concerning. Okay, yeah, it's disappointing that we're still having seizures. You notice how Bear is still having seizures despite being on medication, and this brings up a really good point, which is the goal of treating epilepsy, regardless of type of epilepsy, is simply to minimize the amount of seizures that a dog has, but we can never really cure them of epilepsy. And really our goal is to get them to have about one seizure every six weeks. That's like a really good level of control most of the time. So I just wanted to clear that up because a lot of people think, oh, I'm gonna go on a seizure medication and then no more seizures. It's just not that simple. And the goal is to control them, lower the frequency, but we can't really make the frequency zero. The other thing I wanted to mention right here is that Bear is still having seizures despite being on meds. And even though that doesn't disprove idiopathic epilepsy, it is an indication to at least consider something like an MRI just to make sure that there isn't a structural problem in the brain like the ever-present, you know, scary differential of a brain tumor. We started her medication, but I'm really concerned that we have not got adequate control. And I think the next step uh, is going to be getting a brain MRI. We've exhausted everything now. So we need to act on this because otherwise, if she continues to have more seizures within 24 hours, that's when it becomes dangerous. Yeah. I mean, prolonged seizures in dogs or any left untreated can lead to brain damage or even death. 
So what the narrator is talking about there is a condition called status epilepticus, and that just basically means like a never-ending seizure. So if a seizure goes on longer than about five minutes continuously, the convulsive part of the seizure, that's where we recommend you know going in through an emergency room as soon as possible. Another ER scenario for a dog with seizures would be if there are more than two grand mal seizures within 24 hours. That's what's called cluster seizures, and we recommend going to an ER for that scenario as well. So again, the emergency scenarios are a seizure lasting greater than five minutes continuously or greater than two grand mal seizures within 24 hours. If either of those conditions are met, your dog needs to see a vet as soon as possible. So the reason I want to get an, a brain MRI scan done is to see if there's anything structurally going on in the brain, like something like a brain tumor. Uh, so we need to rule that out before we continue progressing with just medical management. Six-year-old Bear is back to her old self. You see Bear? Much to the relief of Danny and husband Will. Bear ended up having her brain MRI, which all came back clear, which was fantastic news. All right, so she said it right there. Bear's MRI was totally normal. So we've ruled out any obvious structural brain problem, like a tumor or a stroke or meningitis. All these different things, we've ruled them out with an MRI. And we now know that Bear is having seizures, and we don't know why we've backed into a diagnosis of idiopathic epilepsy. So that's how you get to a diagnosis of idiopathic epilepsy. Isn't a huge relief. Oh, catch me. Since then, we have just been trying to titrate her medication to get the right dose to control those seizures. And I'm happy to say that they are well controlled now. So she does have them every now and again, but very infrequent. So it's a really good result. All right, so Dr. Danny seems happy. She mentioned how Bear is having infrequent seizures, which is, again, our goal of treatment for idiopathic epilepsy. So I think Bear, hopefully, you know, does really well long-term and uh, continues to be a good boy for Dr. Danny. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I had fun making it. I love doing these reaction videos to vet shows. If you think of any you want me to react to, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps to grow the video, grow the channel. It's what I want to do. I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.